Vitor Belfort um, gets in with Evander Holyfield. Late minute, last minute replacement for Oscar De La Hoya allegedly has COVID. I even I start to wonder if he really had COVID. Nevertheless, they get him in there with Evander Holyfield, who was supposedly getting ready for a possible fight with Mike Tyson. So I don't think he was right off the couch. But nevertheless, he was like 50-something years old. That was hard to watch. I mean... Watching even watching Holyfield get through the ropes at the beginning of the fight was hard for me to watch, and um, it ended exactly as we'd expect. He got knocked out. Well, you know, Evander would have said it. They stopped it too early, but I think they saved him from like a serious injury because Belfort was Belfort, who's had a long history of doping, looked like a physical specimen. Uh, Evander Holyfield was always physically fit. They both looked great for their age, but Belfort just looked young and strong and just put it on him. Um, what would you see? I mean, I hesitate to even say what you see there because it was just one way traffic and a hard, hard one to watch. Well, first of all, Holyfield took the fight on short notice. Not, I'm not saying that, that that he shouldn't have been in the ring. Yeah, and it saddens me. The names change, but the results don't. I put out a tweet with Rob that uh night afterwards, and I, I, I felt very sad. And I put out a, a tweet that basically said this. The names change, but not the sadness and not the results. Um, whether it's Joe Lewis in there with Rocky Marciano, and that's not Joe Lewis. It's a shadow of Joe Lewis. Whether it's Muhammad Ali geez, in there with Holmes, that's not Muhammad Ali, you know. Uh or whether it's Holyfield in there with Belfort. That's not Holyfield. That's not the guys that we we remembered in their glory days. You know, they were so great. They were so great. So great. And uh, it's sad. It's sad to see. Uh, and with, there, there's got to be a line drawn somewhere. Because... I think everybody knew. I think that there was a video that had been released, if I'm not wrong, Ken, where it showed Holyfield in training that really sent out like warning signals. Like he looked... It was, uh, open workout media day a couple of days yeah, before the I fight. I heard. I didn't yeah, see yeah. it. I didn't. So I'm not going to... You know, I always... Gonna, we're going to always tell the truth, obviously. And But I heard about it from people that I know that their judgment means something. And uh, they said it looked like the guy, Holyfield, just, he shouldn't be in the ring. I mean, it, it, watching a workout, you could see that he was damaged. And, you know, and Belfort is a younger guy, I guess, a little younger and in better shape and, you know, whatever. And he didn't take the punishment over the years. And Belfort is a hell of a champion, hell of a UFC. I give him his, his credit and his respect. And he was ready. But... And Holyfield, again, he took it on short notice, but but he's not, at this point in his life, uh, it's dangerous for him to do this. And you got to draw a line somewhere because someone's going to get hurt. Yep. Some of this stuff, do I have the answer? Once you open the gate, who do you close it on? I, I, it's tough. <laughs> uh, really. And I get it. That once you open that gate, Teddy... You know, uh, wh who do you say can go through, can't go through, but you got to have some way, some criterion. Yep. And you got to stop the reason why they're going to the gate. And this, is, That's this right. is the key. They're going to the gate because it's a sport that I know you could say you want that uh, they shouldn't be in that position. Hey, hey. We all make mistakes and we all do things. We think we are immortal at a certain point in our lives. And when you're making money, you, sometimes you don't think about tomorrow. You're just thinking about today. And and it's sad. I get it. I understand it. Uh, but what I'm talking about is that my sport, that I've been in almost 50 years, is the only major sport that doesn't have a pension for retired fighters. And it should. It, it should. We need a pension because if you had a pension for some of these guys, they wouldn't be coming back to this gate that I talk about. They wouldn't be coming to it. 
and Holyfield might not be coming to it. And I hate to even say that with all the money that he's made, whatever. I mean, but I, I mean, because I have so much respect and care, love for for Holyfield. And um, he's even come in for my foundation dinner. Uh, we had him on last year on the virtual show. We had him show. on a virtual Great show guy. on the dinner. I mean, just obviously a, a special, special person, man. And... To see him in this position, having to put himself in the ring at this point at 58 years of age um, and do it on quick notice, it was beyond sad. And in some ways, I mean, I, I, I understand responsibility, but I also understand this sport, this sport has a responsibility to look out for the fighters. And it doesn't do a good enough job. Yep. I have a plan, and I had a plan, for how you could get a pension. It's never going to happen. We don't have that infrastructure. But it, would, it wouldn't be that hard. Uh, there's difficulties, but it wouldn't be that hard. It could get done. You put a 2% tax on the biggest, the big fights of the year. The greedy promoters wouldn't even feel it. They wouldn't even feel it. And you take that 2% and you put it in a pot. You put it in a fund for retired fighters. And then you figure out the criterion, how it's going to be dispersed. The problem would be, and I understand, is who would control that money? Because in boxing, it would well get robbed in about 10 minutes. And maybe, <laughs> no, no about 10 minutes. So, <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, I mean. It could be less. It could it could actually be less than ten minutes. But that's the problem. You'd have that's why I say a national commission with the proper people running it with the interest structure. Then you have people, people of character, people people that have the background, the expertise in that field, people that have integrity. You know, the right people uh, to obviously safeguard that fund, run that fund, disperse that fund. You know, protect that fund, and and then then you could then you could alleviate some of these situations. The other thing that I would suggest too is to these young fighters that are coming up is look at these things as cautionary tales. And if you need to see an example of how someone who's done it correctly, look at the career and the life of Sugar Ray Leonard. I think at one point last year, he listed his house in the Pacific Palisades for $50 million. He clearly managed his money correctly. And, and, and it's never too early to start doing that. If there was ever anything that I could personally do to help any of these guys, uh, happy to give Thank free you, advice to anyone. Yes. It's not Thank my you. job. But people, you need to think about the future if you're fighting. Thank you for saying that, Ken. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you saying that because um, if we could just help, you know, if we could help one of these guys uh, just avoid this uh this this terrible pit of quicksand uh because that's what it is you're, you're not coming out of it you know you're not coming out of it you you're not you you know and um it's just i just hate to see these great gladiators uh have to have to be in that position it was so sad for me and you know i'm gonna say something now too and i'll qualify it i'll qualify it by saying that hey i understand what holly fielder was 58 years old and where he was and that he shouldn't have been in the ring i said it already but the pride of that man he gets dropped he gets up and then he goes to you know, to try to fight. And he's getting, he's blocking those punches. He didn't know what to, yeah. the way he used to be able to make your mess, bang, come back, you know, do that. But he he was blocking those punches. They weren't landing, maybe one. But really, once at that point, he was blocking those punches. Now, I'm not in any way knocking a referee, but under normal circumstances, that fight should not have been stopped. It should not. He knew Holyfield did not 
belong in the ring. Yep. It hurt because to know the pride and the dignity of Holyfield, to see him, I saw it. He's not a guy. He's not that guy that would ever go crazy and ever push the referee. And He's not that guy. But you could see it in his body language and the way he lurched his shoulders, the way that he, he just went like this, you know, like, like to say, I, I'm okay. Why are you stopping it? Like he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed. It was like, I, I'm, I, I don't get fights stopped like this. I'm, I'm okay, you know, what are you stopping it for? And, and it, it hurt me to my freaking soul to, to see that and to understand that part of the distress and the damage, not just the physical part, the personal, the emotional part, to see what I knew how he was feeling. He was feeling the same way yep. as I was. He was saying, what are you doing? I, I'm a, I, I don't... You don't have to, ah, oh, gee. It's like he went, ah. Oh. And, and he's not going to go crazy because he's got too much class. That's not him. And, and it's just yeah. like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And you could see it. He's humiliated. 